Hello, it's very autumny now. Ironically, it's been raining all week and the day I'm doing this, it's sunshine. But it is getting rainy, it is getting autumny. Our autumn girls are still here and we're going to embrace that whole new staying at home crafting world by making ourselves some things for our autumn garland. And today we're going to make a little umbrella. Obviously our umbrella can be the other way up to keep us safe. But we're going to have that. If you don't have an autumn garland and you don't have a reason to have a very 3D one like that, you could always just put it onto a card by making only half of it. And we're going classic and old school this week. All we really need for this is a pencil, some scissors, glue stick, paper, something circular to draw around, if you're making a card, you're going to need card. If you're making it as the hanging up one, you're going to need this craft wire, which you might remember from the live ones I bought a few weeks ago and had to find a reason for. But there's lots of things you could improvise with if you don't have craft wire for that one. Okay, so I got given these lovely uh, pack of paper for my birthday and lots of ones inside there. So I'm going to use that and it's one sided paper. When you do it with one sided paper, you get the top of the umbrella looking different to the bottom of the umbrella. And I actually quite like that because you can see a difference. However, you are seeing both sides of it. And if you would prefer to use double sided, you can do that too. It's up to you, you know, whichever one you want to do. Now we need something circular to draw around and I've got out my crisp bowl. Here, that's the highest accolade I can give a bowl because I love crisps. Because it's exactly the right size. My coasters weren't big enough. Ugh. It's the right size to make the most of the piece of paper. So it's more or less the same size as my pad and a lot of them are like that. So just hunt around to find something circular like that that you can draw around where you won't have too much wastage. This bowl is 12 centimetres across and that's giving me this kind of size. Okay, but totally improvise with your paper and your circle. You can make this bigger or smaller as usual. You know, if you wanted a gigantic one, you could do that. If we want a teeny one for these kind of dolls, we could do that too. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And what you're going to need for this is four circles. So cut yourself out four circles that look like this. Okay, so cut out four circles. I've done it with the same colour. This, as it, you see, called itself ombre, so it's got a slight change to it, but it's up to you whether you want them all to be different or all the same, okay? I realise there's only two here, that's because I've already folded two of them. Okay, once you've got that like that, you're then going to fold it in half and in half again. And I know how many millions of people have done the spring wreath with me, and that's the same thing we're gonna start with. So we're going to fold it in half, and of course we're going to make a really good fold. This is important in this one because we're going to be folding it back on itself where it doesn't want to go. So the fact that you've made a really good fold is more important than making sure it's perfect. Okay, and then we're going to fold it in quarters. And again, when we make our good fold, as I've said, when we do the spring wreath is to make sure that the fold is going really well right into the corner because it's the middle section that always takes all the stress of the folding. So go right into there, nice and hard with those things. Is this origami? No, we're using glue stick. Well done, students. Okay, so open it up again. Now I've drawn lines on there so that you can see, but you don't need to do that, okay? That is purely for you to see, because that is where your glue is going. We are not gluing all over. Are you listening? No gluing all over. We are only going to glue where those lines are. So we're gonna get our glue stick and actually make it go up like a lipstick, which normally I say don't do. And we're gonna do a line of glue down the middle and a line of glue across. And that's all. So it was just a line there and a line there. Not like this, because we want to have all this bit glue free. Okay, don't forget to put your lid back on because that's the end of gluing for a little while. We're then going to fold it in half, but when we fold it in half, I only want this bit and this bit of the glue to stick, not that bit. So fold it carefully. Okay, so 
so I'm going like this and I'm folding carefully and I'm just holding the central bit. I'm just going to draw a little line on that so that you can see where I'm holding. Because I don't want this bit of glue sticking down just yet, but I do want this bit of glue sticking. So I'm going to carefully pull my fingers up there and stick that together, but not stick this together. Because what I want to do with that one is I want to open it up like this. And this bit is going to stick to that bit. So if I just hold it like that, you can see what I'm doing. I'm folding that in. Like that. You have to be careful it's folded right into the centre here. So just use your fingers to make sure that that's gone down. I always keep those nails nice and sharp to make sure that's gone. When you get it to that stage, you're going to fold it up, which is now going to let you get your fingers in there along that line again and push. We're still being careful not to squash that while we're doing it. We're then going to turn it over and do exactly the same thing. So we're going to push this part open all the way down until it gets in the centre. And then you're going to be looking at that. Make sure it's gone right up. I'm just going to have to turn that around now because of course I'm doing it all upside down and backwards and squash it down. If it takes a while to do that and you have to put a little bit more glue in, that's fine. Now I'm just running my finger and my nail along that middle section there so that I end up with that. And then I'm going to fold that up together. And now we can be a little bit stronger with our fingers. We're not crushing this edge but we're pulling that down like that so that you end up with that on one side, that underneath, and that on the other side. Now if you make two of those so that they're exactly the same and then glue them together, so you would have them up like that, put a little bit of glue along here and stick them together. In fact, I'll do that for you. I don't know why I was just showing you without actually doing it. So I'm still being careful not to crush it, but I am getting enough glue on. It's that whole thing. We've done lots of paper crafts now, so we're just being careful and strong. Careful and strong. Good thing for life, I think. Probably. Holding those two together, that's just two of them. And that creates the one for the card. So if you put that onto a card, you can then just draw the handle of your umbrella with felt tip and put some rain on. It occurred to me after I'd done this demonstration one that my rain is actually going to be going underneath my umbrella. Perhaps I should have stuck it on the other side and tried to make it so that the rain wasn't doing that. You could also stick it lower down on your card so that you could have it there and write some sort of comment about sheltering under your umbrella with your friend. If you're happy with drawing, you could draw some people or cut out a photo of you and somebody sheltering underneath an umbrella, that your friendship is sheltering us from the umbrella, things like that. I also quite liked it on this bright coloured card, which was another birthday present, these bright coloured cards. So you could put it on like that if you were going to be using it on the card. Yet again, of course, this is a card for giving, not a card for sending because it sticks up a heck of a lot. But you would just glue that onto there and that would look really nice. If you're wanting to make this one, which is what I'm doing, because as well as last year's autumn garland, which I have up here, if you've seen my Instagram, I did some little cross-stitched animals, a deer, a badger and a, <laughs> what was the other one? A deer, a badger and a fox. And the little birds that we did a few weeks ago. And they're forming another autumn garland at my front window downstairs. And to be honest, it's looking a little bit bare, that one. So these ones are gonna head on there and it's in a big bay window, so the 3D-ness will suit. So we're going to just stick all four of these together if we met when we've made four. We're going to stick four of them together in order to get that. So 
I've got another, here's one I made earlier, and I'm going to stick that together. Now, to be honest, the sticking does become a little bit tricky when you're in there holding them all together and doing it, and a bit of patience will help. If your glue stick does not feel as if it's being strong enough, then you can use a double-sided tape, which will be stronger. Always remember, of course, with double-sided tape, that you can't make a mistake. If you rip it away once you've done paper, then you're stuck, aren't you? Whereas with glue stick, you have a little bit more. Now, when you get to there, you can decide. I decided that four was more or less perfect to get that kind of shape. But it would work with three as well if I pull that around. It's a less fulsome umbrella, but maybe you want a less fulsome umbrella. Of course, if you have this the other way up, it's a flower and it's not totally dissimilar to our Kusadama flower from a while ago. But it's not time for flowers in autumn, is it? It's time for umbrellas. We're trying to do that. So if you wanted to have, I just wanted to show you a three one as well. If you wanted to do it in three, you're putting more stress as you pull this around on it. So it might ping off, especially when I haven't given it enough time to dry. But it also, you might just want it to look like this. You can decide whether you want it to be as fulsome as my original one, which was four of them, or whether you're happy with three. I'm just fluffing out the bits in between now by shoving my finger in and just fluffing them out from the squash, evening them all up again as they go around, and then there we are. So that's one that has four, and that's one that has three, and they both look nice. You decide what you want to do. The good thing about our craft wire here is that you can cut it with scissors. So it comes on a really, really long one. Mine came from the works and I've just cut a bit off. It's super easy to bend. I have used some uh, different types of wire before and have found them a bit tricky to do. Sometimes when you get those wires on a round bit, they never, un they never straighten out again. Whereas here you've got a bit that's straight. Some of them are just too hard on my hands. I'm just not strong enough. I'm going to take it and put it up through the middle. And then, oh, I couldn't find the middle there. And when it comes out of the top, I'm just going to fold it. So I'm going to push it a bit further, fold it over the top and squash, which creates that little top that you have on the umbrella anyway, but also stops it from falling off when you're doing that. So that'll just hook back round and then you can make the bottom of your umbrella. And as I say, it cuts really nice and easily. So just get some strong scissors like these ones and cut it off, curl it around, and they are going to hang on my autumn garland downstairs. I'll put a photo of that on for you to have a look at. We have got some little robins behind us on the tree because it won't be long until we're starting to think about Christmas crafts and I'll see you soon for some of those.